Maybe you've never touched code in your life, but I believe that you can learn how to make a custom uh, Crunker UI using CSS, even if you don't always believe in yourself. Obviously, I don't expect that everyone who watches this video is gonna go make their own Crunker UI, but of course, you're welcome to use my code and I'll make it available on my website and I'll try to keep it updated. If you have no interest at all in customizing your UI, then maybe you just like to watch my channel. At the very best, you may really like web design and uh, might even make a career out of it someday. The only thing that you're gonna need is the Google Chrome web browser and that's it. If you're a more advanced user, you might find this interesting as well because there are a lot of different methods uh, to get a similar result. This method does not use a resource swapper or even a text editor and I'm gonna try to keep things simple. So I'll be focusing on changes to um, the menu system and the in-game overlay cascading style sheets. Here's an analogy. So HTML is like the base structure. So you can think of it as this AK and you can think of CSS like skin. So um, this is the same AK, but with added style. You can make both temporary and long-term changes to HTML and CSS in Google Chrome using the inspect tool, control shift I. By default, it's gonna show the elements pane and that includes the HTML that's responsible for rendering everything that you see on screen. I can make changes here, for example, deleting this. Uh, everything disappears, but those changes are not going to be permanent. I'm in a closed drawer because we don't need it. Next, click on the sources panel, then click on overrides, then select folder for overrides, and then um, make a folder on your desktop or wherever you want to put it. And I'm just going to call it Crunker Overrides. It doesn't matter what you name it. And then click allow. And this will enable long-term changes to the site. Um, again, multiple ways to do this, but I felt like this was the most elegant. Next, click on page and then click on both main.css and main underscore custom.css. Main.css has the majority of Crunker's default styling, so first thing to do is hit this button to format it, make it look cleaner. You can make changes here and it should work, but maybe not in the future, because that's why Sid added the main underscore custom.css, because he wants us to include the CSS overrides in this file, main underscore custom. But first I'm gonna edit the layout of the inspect tool a little bit and do a vertical layout, just because that's my preference. I'm gonna hide the debugger since we don't need it. I'm gonna go back to the elements pane and then drag this out. So on the left is HTML, on the right CSS. And you could actually make changes here as well. So if I wanna take away the font, change the font, um, I can make changes this way too. And you could always hit Control Z to undo. But if you do make changes here, it is gonna be changing main.css instead of main underscore custom dot CSS. For the final CSS, I would much rather work in the main underscore custom just because it will be as clean as possible that way. But that's okay because you can actually log the changes uh, to save later. And um, what you do is you hit escape to bring up something called the drawer and then click on the dot, 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 and click on changes. And then if I uh, make a change here, then it's gonna show in this changes drawer. And then I can actually hit this button to just reset the file. I do prefer to work in the sources pane, but you can always hit control shift C and then hover over the mouse. And it's gonna tell you the name of the CSS class. So let's go back to sources and then overrides. Uh, open up um, main.css and then format main.css. And now we're gonna start making real changes. Now I'll show you the methodology that we're gonna do repeatedly uh, to customize the UI. So the first thing is understand that um, we're gonna be making changes to CSS classes. And what do I mean by CSS class? It's um, these things right here, like HTML comma body and then the brackets. So basically what CSS classes do is that it allows you to make um, styling changes to a variety of elements all at once that um, have that identifier attached to it. The good thing is that you don't actually have to memorize any of this language at all because we're merely gonna be making edits to it and you can look up anything that you don't know on a site called W3Schools. Step one is figure out exactly what you wanna change. So in this case, uh, I wanna make the Crunker logo smaller because it takes up too much of the screen. So figure out what the element is and what class it's using. Um, you can hit Control Shift C to um, look over it and then you can kind of click around. Um, it's a lot of trial and error, so I recommend just using a combination of different methods, but you can also just control F and type in something like logo. So then I can test uh, by changing a value. Okay, it did something. So I'm gonna control Z, I know this is what I wanna change. Uh, I'm gonna copy this over to main underscore custom.css, drop that in, and any changes I make here are gonna override the contents of main.css. So I wanna make the logo smaller, and a lot of ways to do that, you can use uh, scale, you can use um, zoom, but since um, Sid already had used height as a means for size, I'm just gonna change this value to 100. Uh, 100, not 2100. We're gonna be repeating the same methodology to make the rest of the changes. Just realized I forgot to switch over to dark mode. 
that's better. So again, just trial and error. You might change something and it might not do what you expect. It might not do anything. So you just can keep on trying. Um, so I was able to find uh, a container class. So I'll copy that into the custom uh, CSS. And anything that you don't change, you actually can delete. So for the logo, I can delete that. For the add container, there's a, a lot of different ways that you can change the size. Um, and I'll start off by just deleting everything. Let's start off by making the add unit smaller. And uh, this time I'm gonna use um, transform scale 0.6, a semicolon. And then now it's smaller, so that worked. And if I wanna move it um, to the right, there's a lot of different ways to adjust position using CSS. Uh, Crunker tends to use top left, bottom right as the properties instead of like margin. Uh, so we're gonna use the same thing. So we'll do um, bottom 0% because we wanna make it start from the bottom. And notice it doesn't do anything because uh, we have to add uh, position um, fixed because um, sometimes it can be positioned like relative to another element. So that will fix it. And then I can define the starting position from the right. So let's say 21%. Next up is gonna be the merch image. And I have bought merch before, so I think I should be allowed to disable it. So I'm gonna use this CSS property called display. Now you should have a general idea of the process. So it's basically first find out what you wanna do, um, find the class, and then just trial and error. So I'm gonna go a bit faster. So basically I don't like how this blocks the middle of the screen. And um, also this is darker. Um, so you have less awareness when you're dead. First I'll make the background more uh, visible by um, just basically adjusting the opacity. It works great, but notice that um, it does impact the opacity of uh, the menus in game, but I want to keep things as simple as possible. And I kind of liked it, so I kept it. So let's go menu window, which I found earlier, and then let's go uh, position like fixed, uh, left, start with the uh, zero and then work our way up, uh, 10%. Use pixels too, but percents, um, how Sid does it, so that looks pretty good. And then how about a bit higher? So let's start from the top this time. Okay, right there. I eventually came up with something like this and uh, you might notice the negative numbers. And sometimes um, when an element doesn't move past where you want it to go, um, you can try experimenting with negatives. And if I click customize, um, notice how the character is now blocked. So I'm gonna adjust something called Z index. And then Sid likes to use like a lot of nines. So I just throw in as many nines as possible. Whatever has a higher AZ index will uh, appear above something else. I looked back at the main.css for some clues and found uh, max height. And um, what I found is that if I do uh, max height fit content, um, it does solve the problem. So Trooper Man no longer blocked. I also had to add a max height property uh, to fix an issue with host game menu. Next is I'm going to hide this and um, add opacity to the menu window, uh, 0 0.9, just to give it a nice um, effect. Uh, a little bit of bleed through through the back, so I'm going to add something called a backdrop filter, and that has um, various like effects that you can do. Uh, let's do a blur um, to the background, so then now. Uh, you can't really make out like the trigger man and it looks a lot cleaner. And I'll also be uh, making some changes to the buttons at the bottom. So they're called the sub logo buttons. Name the class. Um, 1.6% at the bottom. And then um, so let's do like 39% coming from the left light opacity as well. Looking pretty good, but still does look a lot like um, the default. So just gonna add something to give it some more flair. Um, we're not using custom fonts because I wanted to keep the original font in there, but gonna add uh, a shadow and a glow effect to the text. So I'll go up to the top and uh, apply it to the body. And you can do it individually on individual classes as well, of course. Now I'm on w3schools.com because I wanna show you guys um, how you can figure out what the CSS properties do. Um, and it also provides you some examples. So we read and understand how it works. Text shadow, uh, first number, horizontal shadow, then vertical shadow, and then blur radius. And you can see here, you can combine uh, multiple shadows on one line to create uh, some pretty cool effects. I messed around with it, and now I have the uh, text shadow that I wanna use in my copy paste. So this is what I came up with. Um, 
So starting off with like um, gray shadow and then another kind of like gray slash dark gray shadow and then a little bit of a, a like a light blue for kind of a color glow and then a white glow. Here's what the effect looks like in game. So it's subtle, but I think it uh, looks pretty cool. So now we're almost done. Uh, just want to add some final touches. Gonna make this bar transparent. So I'm back over in main.css, so the default uh, game um, CSS. And then I noticed that it's got a color picker here and I can even just take the color picker and adjust the transparency. Uh, but if you recall, like I'm gonna wanna copy this over to the um, main underscore custom CSS instead. Delete everything that I'm not using. And then why not add the, the backdrop filter to it as well. Oh, forgot a semicolon here. This is gonna make the leaderboard more visible uh, when we have opacity. Next, I'm gonna add a glow around the portrait in game. So down at the bottom left. This next one is just gonna clean up um, the top right. So get rid of that uh, header. I did end up taking it a step further and this is what uh, I came up with. Um, but if you don't like the blue neon look, you could have always stopped uh, at the previous step. So that's really it. Now you guys should have an understanding of how to create a custom UI in Crunker using CSS. But of course, you can take that CSS knowledge and apply it to any website out there. The first problem is if the overrides are not working properly, it just might be because you have too many files conflicting with each other. Maybe you have another version somewhere that's overriding your overrides. So what you want to do is clear all the overrides from Chrome, uh, create a new empty folder, and then um, select that folder and set up new overrides. Just make sure that you copy over uh, that CSS um, somewhere else. The next problem is when game updates break the overrides. Um, so what you want to do is uh, you want to copy over and back up the CSS. Then you want to clear your overrides and uh, you want to um, set it up in a new folder again and then open again that main uh, underscore custom.css and it should have a different build number and then set that up as your new overrides folder and copy in the backup and it should work. So what if you want to use the Crunker resource swapper? Um, I personally don't have much experience with it uh, so I recommend checking out um, Quacky's channel because he does um, really good explanations on how to set things up with the resource swapper. So what if you want to use a custom UI with the Crunker client? I don't believe that the official Crunker client supports it, uh, but a number of other um, Crunker clients do. The one that I was able to get it to work on most easily is um, a lesser known client called um, the custom Crunker client. And it works great, so that's the one that I'm gonna be using for now. All I had to do was upload the main underscore custom.css file pretty much anywhere, like Dropbox, and then into the link um, into the settings as you would um, scope. Another alternative to using the client is um, to create kind of like a web app via shortcut on the desktop and uh, works in any Chromium based browser like Brave or Chrome. All you gotta do is click on the more tools, click on uh, the dot dot dot, click on create a shortcut, open in a new window and then it will save to your desktop. And then when you launch that, it's gonna get, have its own dedicated window. Um, you can even configure things like NVIDIA settings uh, to this. So it somewhat acts like a program. I hope you guys enjoyed this guide on how to create a custom Crunker UI. It did take a long time to prepare. So um, please help support my channel by using the code fills in the Crunker item store and please subscribe to Mia as well. I would really appreciate it. As I mentioned in the intro, you guys are, are more than welcome to use my custom UI. So I'll, I'll include the CSS on my website, feelsgoodman.com, and that will contain instructions on how to install it as well. And I'll include a link in the description. So if you made it this far in the video, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys next time.